Hello everyone, 44 Smokehound here today. We are checking out the balance beam scale that's on my bench. I've been looking at scales for quite a while and this is the one I eventually ended up with. I've had the digital scales for a long time. I find the digital scales cumbersome and aggravating because they rely on battery power. They're affected by temperature, humidity, Every kind of miserable thing you can think of. They also shut off on you and won't function because they've got the the, the uh, feature where you can disable. You can disable it, but it'll shut itself down after so many seconds to save battery power. But one of the things about digital scales is they always require a minimal voltage for operational parameters. That means that the longer the batteries have been in the scale you don't necessarily know where they're at. The scales drifting, the scales have a tendency to do things that are aggravating because they, they'll jump on you. This is a balanced beam scale. I don't know if you really can see what's going on here. But this scale is zeroed right smack dab. Now you'll notice that this scale is tipped up and it's not exactly level. But if you'll look back here and you'll see why, it's because this pin is out of place. Now if I put this right on the zero like it's supposed to be, then you'll see that that scale is perfectly straight across. Now, it's zeroed on this end. You can see that. But one of the things that people don't seem to understand about balance beam scales is it's a balanced beam. That beam is perfectly level with the gravitational fields of our Earth. Now, that may sound silly, but if you were to take a level and put it behind it on the wall somewhere and level the level and then put the scale in front of it and use by sight, you would see that that scale is perfectly level. Now, if I raise up on it on this end, that scale is still perfectly level because of its balance. It's called a balanced beam scale. I don't care where you put this end of the scale, up in the air or down like this, as long as you don't succeed, exceed the bottom and stop of the deal, this scale is always perfectly straight across until you add weight to this end or move the weight here this way. This scale has an accuracy of plus or minus two grains. That is very, very important to me. I was uh, using the gunpowder tight group. It is a very clumpy mixture of powder. I found the HS6. The HS6 is not as clumpy and the volume necessary to produce the same velocity is greater meaning that tight group is a super hot powder. And what I mean by that is if you look in the Hornady book under the whatever bullet you're looking at, you're going to see that a small number of grains changes the velocity of your bullet. And I mean like two grains can change your velocity by 50 feet per second. That is a hot powder and very, very, in my opinion, unreliable because when you load, you load by two things, weight or volume. If you're loading by volume, a clumpy powder produces issues. If you're loading by weight, you can do it, but it is slow is everything and aggravating with a digital scale. You can spend more money. You can buy the more expensive scales. Most of them are battery powered. I haven't actually seen a scale that you plug into the wall, but I'm pretty sure they exist. But even if you did, you would still be susceptible to humidity, temperature, and the aggravation of simply breathing on the darn thing. That can take place with this scale as well, but it has a magnetic dampening system on it, which is going to prevent that or slow it down. This scale, in my personal opinion, is 10 times faster and more accurate than a digital scale. Now, whether or not that that's scientifically true is another thing. 
but I'm going to tell you this. In loading 50 shells with this thing, and loading 50 shells with this hand loader, this scale makes that hand loader 10 times faster. A digital scale uh, having to weigh every single load makes this process super slow. And I am so glad that I found this scale. I love it. It's all metal. The only part on it that is plastic is the foot. Actually, it's not. It's not, it's not plastic. This scale is all metal. Now, this scale... Pardon me, folks. I dropped the camera. This scale comes balanced from the manufacturer. That screw in the center of the measuring bowl on this end can be removed and inside there are some tiny washers. You get some washers that come with the scale when you purchase it. Those washers allow you to balance the scale, and what I mean by that is to zero the scale straight across so it's perfectly level. Not zero it with these things, zero it where it's perfectly cross, straight across with gravity. Not the scale, not the bench. A balanced beam scale works on one principle. It's balanced at zero here and zero here. The zero on this end, the zero on this end. When they're both zeroed, that thing is perfectly balanced no matter where your bench is at. Now, if you're past the limits on the end of the scale, then that's a different story, but we're not past the limits. The scale has almost an inch of adjustment on it at the bottom here. That inch of adjustment is to level the I mean, actually to zero the markings with the zero on the scale. You can see that as I move it up and down, I pick up on it, the scale stays the same, but it's the base that's moving, not the balance beam. Pay very, very close attention to these. They are good scales. There's nothing wrong with them. If it's jumping, there's a reason. You've got a fan going, you've got air movement, you've got something in the environment causing that issue. This is the reason that I love this scale. Now, I'm loading with the lead load master and I'm using volume, the volume disc system. This is the 45 ACP kit. It works fabulous. What is in this setup here, which is the 0.49 uh, volume setting, is what I've got this set to. Um, is perfectly balanced, I mean perfectly weighed at 7 grams on this thing right here. And that's what I'm shooting in my FA, my ACP. FACP, that's a term I, I'm familiar with, so pardon me for saying that. That's because I work on fire alarm. But the, a, the ACP uh, shell... I put seven grains in here, and the reason that I put seven grains in here and I want seven grains is because I want a volume of powder that is not clumpy and going to be accurate. That means that the powder itself is not as hot as tight group. Now, there are other powders out there that are probably not as hot, but most of them that I've looked at that have to do with pistols all are very low in volume at 750 and 800 and feet per second or even 900 or 1100. The volume of gunpowder placed in the cartridge is very small compared to the high velocity you get. But with this particular thing, I get a high volume of gunpowder and a low volume, I mean a low um, feet per second. Now, that's best for me because I'm shooting black powder weapons. You've seen my black powder weapon in the last video I did. This is that gun. This is the gun that I shoot. And it's got the uh, 
conversion cylinder in it, which you actually have to remove in order to load. But I am in love with black powder guns. I'm in love with the Western style revolver. I don't like automatics. I think they waste bullets, but I'm going to tell you I own one and they are fun. But there is nothing like the love of actually shooting a bullet downrange and hitting the target and taking your time. With this gun right here, I can spend all day at the range. Not because it shoots uh, fast, not because I love it like I do, but because everything needs to be slowed down. If you're actually using the back powder cylinder in this gun, you're actually taking 15 to 20 minutes to load the gun. Some of you out there may say, that's just way too long, but I'm in love with these guns. I'm in love with them because of their beauty. I'm in love with them because of their functionality. They just look 10 times better than an automatic. But I will tell you this, my favorite automatic is the 1911. It's the best looking gun I've ever seen in my life. And the second one to that is going to be the Browning 22 911. That thing is just absolutely beautiful as far as I'm concerned. I want one. I don't have one yet. But at some time in the future, I plan on getting one. And the reason that I like the gun is because it's to scale. It is actually a 911 reduced in scale to a 22 caliber. Meaning that the gun's not big. Women should love this thing because it's absolutely beautiful gun. But back to what we were talking about. Loading with a digital scale is just a pain in the butt. But with this system and that scale and these lubricants, everything is beautiful. One of the things that I've had some issues with has been the feed. But... I've discovered that that issue has to do with the alignment of this, whether it's twisted right or left, because this is a square, it's still in a round slot at the bottom. So that controls whether or not that this arm is straight across. Now it's definitely on this slide, but it's got just a little play in it, just enough to where things cannot work right. This right here, when you put a bullet in there, a shell, like I'm doing, and you pull it down, you can see it push in, and then you can see it pull back. Now, sometimes the bullet will come back just a tiny bit with it, the shell. And when that happens, then you can't continue because the shell is going to bump the outside of the unit. That's one of the issues I've been having. But I've come to look at the scale, become closer, involved with it. In other words, I know the scale not the scale, but the loader more. And I'm, I've been able to adjust this by using this quarter inch wrench on here and just giving it a slight twist left or right to put this shell pusher in the exact center of the shell plate. So now that when I do load the shells, they don't get yanked back. So everything seems to be working really good now. I'm ready to go. I've already loaded most of my shells. Uh, that's actually all that I've got left, left. And the main reason that I do have these left is because most of these are the small primers and that's just set up for the large primers. One other thing that I want to go over real quick is that if you're in this scale and let's say, I mean, the, in the, into this loading and you're using it and let's say you come up and you get to a point and something goes wrong and you want to come back down you know it didn't advance itself but if you take this thing up and then tap this in it comes back out and it'll advance it without actually having to push any of your shells up into your dies you can advance this thing all the way back around and get your shell back out and you don't have to pull it or do it manually uh, from the shell point of view, and I could actually eject the shell. See right there? 